move this to my table. Um, I let it set up overnight. You can see how hard the sides especially are. This top is still a little wet and unfortunately because of the way I had it propped up so it could dry, there's now some divots in it from that, um, from resting inside the vacuum container. I'm a little bit bummed about it, uh, these divots, but I think I could take them mostly out. It's just going to be an extra step of work. It would have been much easier if it was circular. The top is actually still somewhat wet in parts. It's just got like right here it's still pretty wet so I'm keeping the bigger uh, divot to the back and I'm going to start roughing out the shape for the face so how I'm going to do that is I have a plumb bob and I'm going to run it across the top to get a very straight vertical line and then I'll split this in half since on most faces our noses are about halfway in the middle of our face you can see his nose looks like it's about perfectly halfway so if I have two vertical lines that will be just about the bottom of the eyes, and I can draw the eyes. The nose will be where those two points intersect, and then the mouth will just be lower than that. So there's the rough cutout of my face. You could see a little better closer up that um, cross I drew which splits everything the way I want it. And the eyes started off bigger. Um, I used a sheet of computer paper and I always cut, um, they looked a little large, but you could see I remarked my circle for about an inch inside that whole um, circumference and I cut that and that looks better. Same thing with the mouth, I overdrew it and I cut out the inside and then I kind of widened it to taste. This is gonna be more so um, by your own eye versus exact measurements. And the nice thing about Tim Burton, one of the many nice things about Tim Burton is symmetry is not going to kill you on these pieces. Um, his characters are not super symmetrical. A lot of the times their heads are tilted or their features or are asymmetrical, so the, nothing has to be super perfect. So this is actually a still from the movie and this is the basic face I'm working off of. Um, the eyes are wide. I know sometimes they're, they're kind of scrunched in anger or what have you. And the mouth is the slightest bit of a smile um, without any teeth showing. I know at some parts of the movie you could see teeth, but this is already a crunch to get it done so I didn't want to um, complicate my life anymore. And whenever you're carving or building something in three dimension at the bare minimum i always print out two photos one head-on photo to get the facial features but then also a profile and you want them to be similar um, looks this is when it's actually in the forest discovering the christmas tree tree so it's probably almost the same face you could see how it has he has the slightest smile and the grin tapers off right below the eye, but then exceeds further past the eye. You can see I marked that on my piece as well. The other thing about the profile is you could see that there's material built up around the eyes. There's material ever so slightly built up around the lips, but the nose also comes to a slight point. His head is not perfectly circular, which it almost kind of looks like it is from that head on view. So I marked the nose on here, but that's going to be built up, not cut out just yet. So my next step for this is to put negatives in the eyes, recess negatives, recess negatives in the mouth, and then build up um, those face contours ever so slightly. Now you could use the paper pulp recipe on the website. I'm going to link in the description. Ideally, that is what I would use. But this is still not completely dry, and it's Sunday afternoon. And I'm actually going somewhere this afternoon, so I won't have a ton of time to work on it. So I think what I'm going to do is pick up some chicken wire and 
build an armature on the inside of the eyes, the inside of the mouth, and I will be should be able to hot glue it in place since this is paper. So this is where I left everything. Um, this morning I went through and kind of cleaned up that mouth a little bit, mainly because I lifted this up so it could, it's not resting on the table anymore. It's easier to work on. And when it's at eye level, it's going to be the... Um, it's going to look the best. You won't have to crouch down to see anything. So I widened that mouth a little bit this morning. So I don't have any chicken wire and I'm not running to the store to get it. So what I'm going to use to create these voids and build up um, some structure for the nose around the eyes and around the mouth is going to be a combination of cardboard and probably some rolled newspaper. I'm going to attach it with hot glue. This is still in spots a little wet, but in general, the sides of it, you can see, is, um, is dry. So I could attach hot glue. And I have a hot glue gun from Lowe's. They're um, pretty strong. The glue is definitely going to be more durable than the mini glue guns you can get at like Walmart around the eyes. And then the dents in the head, I'm probably going to fix using a combination of the eye patches I cut out and some other stuff. I'm going to be using the caulk pretty much because when you put the cardboard on there, there's going to be a ridge and you could see with the newspaper because I'm going to eventually cover everything in more paper mache. The newspaper picks up all of the inconsistencies in whatever form you're using. So that silicone will just kind of smooth out the transition between the current paper mache head and whatever I'm adding to it. So I'm Pretty much not going to speak much more about that. I'm just going to film it, especially the parts on the head, because if you plan this out better than I do and give yourself more time, it could dry inside that ball and you won't have these divots like I do. It will be much more uh, round. And then on the bottom, I did this a couple days ago. I just went through with my snips and clipped off the bottom so it was even. So I took these strips of cardboard and to make them super flexible, I curf I essentially curve them like you would plywood in order to bend it. And the easiest way I found to do this is with a pencil. If you use something sharp, it usually goes through the other side and you don't want that. So now you can see just how you could pretty much get any sort of circular or arch form by curving that back side. This is where I am before hopefully the final coat of paper mache. Um, it's Monday. I'm hoping to get that coat on today. And if I have to do a little bit of tweaking tomorrow, I will. Also, to be perfectly honest, technically tomorrow is goosey night. And while my neighborhood's not terrible, there's definitely car break-ins and vandalism that happens, like probably in most towns. So... I'm not super keen on leaving this out overnight as it is anyway, so this might just be a Halloween day thing. We'll have to see how it goes. You can see how I put that caulk on there to kind of blend everything in. And for the head, I just kind of put patches of cardboard and then blended it in. It's not going to be perfect, but I think it will work. And then for the inside, you can see that cardboard I put in there. I probably didn't need these backers, but the piece I cut out in the front fit in there perfectly so I just glued those in as well as the mouth and I just cut little pieces and caulked in between them and once you put the paper mache on it it should create the ridges. Now this is acrylic caulk so it should dry in about a half an hour. It's probably going to take a little bit longer out here 
but I wanted to use acrylic because silicone for I would be really nervous about this paper mache sticking to silicone. It might not stick to the acrylic, but the nice thing is, is since you're using the overlapping, regardless, there's all this clear paper mache material up top it could stick to. But I think it might adhere a little bit to this to the acrylic. So I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. I probably won't wait until it's perfectly dry. And then um, I'm going to mix up the batch the same way I've been mixing it up. Have strips. They'll probably be smaller because I'm working with smaller areas. And start applying that. So I let this dry overnight and a little bit into today, and it's pretty dry. The inside of the eyes are still a little wet, but it's definitely dry enough to paint. Um, so I started painting the back, and I have this high build, um, extra white coating. I believe it's actually for concrete, but it's really thick, and I'm using that so I could get away with hopefully just putting one coat on it. And it is Tuesday, so I won't be able to put it up there till actually Halloween, but hopefully that means tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I can uh, put this out there. So that's the gist of it with the paint on. I'm going to have to do some touch-ups in the morning on the mouth. Um, I was a little hasty with putting the black on. The white wasn't fully dry, so it was starting to turn gray in some areas. So I'll just have to touch it up. But I'm going to let this dry overnight. And then since tomorrow's Halloween, I'll just put it on the bear. Um, hopefully it fits. I'll get it to fit on there somehow if it doesn't just plop right on. But that's pretty much the finished product. I'm fairly happy with it. Um, I would have enjoyed having some more time to smooth the whole surface, but this little bubbling effect you're seeing, I think is because the newspaper in certain spots wasn't fully dry, so then putting that wet paint on top of it, it's kind of bubbling, so that will flatten out over time. But in general, um, those pieces of cardboard I put up here to fix the head worked really well, and the shape and everything itself worked out. So in general, the rendering of the head, I'm pretty happy with. The features themselves are are pretty good. The one thing that's throwing me off visually is um, Jack's head is actually, even though it looks like it here, it's a little less of a perfect circle than a, um, a beach ball. You can see when I kind of pan up real quick, that perfect circles is, is throwing it off a little bit. It would be a little wider on the edges, which would probably make it look a little bit better. But finding something oval to make this around would have just taken forever. It So I ripped it a little bit while I was putting it up there, but in general, it fit pretty well. The biggest hang-ups I had were actually the parts going inside caught up on the nose and the ears, but I'm fairly happy with it. It doesn't look particularly like Jack Skellington. I still think part of that has to do with the face shape and maybe the eyes should be a little bit bigger, but for what it is, a master of my bear. I'm fairly happy with it.